All right, back here on the Disc Golf Network press conference with Chris Dickerson. Hello, Chris. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. The real question is, after last weekend's big, huge win, your second major and the first of this year, how does it feel? How are you feeling? Uh, feels great. You know, I've kind of come back down uh, to earth a little bit after that win, so it's kind of like we're just back in the groove of things. But you did get a chance to hopefully celebrate and soak in that positive energy. Mm -hmm. I did. And how do you, how can you maintain that positive momentum into this elite series at Jonesboro this weekend? Um, you know, it, it's hard to carry one thing from one event to the next. So uh, going into this, it's, it's a clean slate. Um, and you know, the good thing about that is it works the same way if you have a bad tournament. You go to the next, it's a clean slate. So um, just going into it with uh, the expe expectations I have for myself and just looking forward to, you know, playing good. And would you say your expectations are, I mean, can you tell us about your practice plan and tournament expectation? Um, practice plan is just to get um, an idea of where I want to land on certain holes out here. Um, it's kind of like a positioning thing. Uh, some places will give you a little bit better look at birdie, uh, specifically on par fours and uh, the fives as well. But there's one or two holes out here that I'm really just kind of thinking about whether I need to attack them or not. Uh, what is it? Hole five is one of them that's still a little bit up in the air. Um, I think I've gotten a pretty good game plan, but you know, if the tournament comes around, it gets a little more windy. Maybe uh, the conditions are a little different. So we'll have to see then. Absolutely. And my last question for you, we've seen you take a big win with your new Discraft lineup. Are there any holes in the bag or any specific shots that you just haven't found yet? Or are you feeling completely confident with your discs? Uh, as far as holes in the bag, I don't believe so. Um, at least none off the top of my head that I can think of. And yeah, feeling pretty confident with them. Hey, Chris, Nate Perkins here. I wanted to ask you about your work-life balance and, and, and how, how, how are you guys traveling? How are you and Brittany traveling th um, this year around? We, we're in an RV right now. Um, and as far as like the work and life balance, um, you know, whenever you love what you do, you don't work that much. So, I mean, and to say that, I'm, I'm out here on the course all the time. Uh, I'm trying to practice as much as I can to get uh, better and better. So um, I really enjoy practicing. So it's like, it's not like work at all. So you don't feel like you have to, to do anything to take your mind off the game ever? Uh, no, every now and then, um, like yesterday, it was a rainy day. We couldn't get out on the course. Well, actually, uh, we came out pretty early and got a really early round in, but we were done by 10 o'clock or so. So we had the rest of the day just to kind of kill time. And uh, we ended up going to an escape room and stuff like that. So it's just, for me, it's more of killing the time in between the tournament rounds or the practice rounds than anything else. I think you beat our escape room time by 30 seconds. I don't know. Um, we couldn't remember what you all had mentioned. We were 51.30. looks like you got 51. 51? Maybe then. <laughs> <laughs> what other kind of activities do you, do you like to get into besides, besides disc golf? I, I want to know Chris Dickerson. Yeah. Um, you know, escape rooms are fun. Um, for a little while, I was playing uh, a lot of pool. Um, just anything competition. Yeah. So we just got off a practice round with Nate Sexton and, and you joined Nate and Big Germ on their Jomez Pro practice round. And Nate says that every time he plays with you that you seem to be throwing further and further. How would you say that your distance <laughs> now compares to the furthest that you've ever thrown? Um. You know, every now and then I'll think, you know, maybe I've lost a little bit of distance, but then uh, I'll throw a shot and think, you know, that went that went pretty far. So, um, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. Some yeah. days you feel like it's not quite there, other days you feel like you've overachieved a little bit, so. Yeah, Sexton specifically said that he kind of had you in the 525 club, mm -hmm. but he really thinks that you're in the 575 club. Oh wow, that that big of a difference. It's a significant difference. It is. It starts to get exponentially further. It harder yeah. to throw further. 
when you get there. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, maybe with a good wind, uh, somewhere around there, I would maybe put myself kind of in between the two. Uh, not like a, you know, a golf fairway shot, but just like a throwing a big ante with something kind of a little stable or something like that. Maybe I could reach somewhere around in there. So hole 14 out here, this side of heaven, signature hole on the property, 500 feet, where it is that you're throwing a Chris Dickerson buzz <laughs> on that hole. Is that your tournament play? Um, it might be dependent on the wind. Um, that that happened in the Jomez practice round. Uh, yeah, we, we stepped up to that hole. They were throwing drivers, and they were just fading out left. Uh, they weren't getting the disc up to speed because of the tailwind. Um, so I figured buzz is going to go straight. This tailwind isn't going to allow it to flip very much. And uh, it actually hazarded out a little bit on me, but we were close enough that Jerem was able to make his putt. So it's just about the winds, really. Hey, Chris, Grant Zellner, PDGA. Uh, just before sunset on Sunday, you were crowned a major champion. Mm -hmm. Since then, you were probably uh, given a lot of requests for interviews and to come as a guest on various podcasts. Then you had an over-the-road uh, journey that was not short to be here. And yep. on top of that, a lot of weather to deal with. So is it safe to say your prep has been limited for this tournament? And if so, can you rely on memory from past years? Um, yeah, for the most part. Uh, the course really hasn't changed that much. Um, there are only two changes this year. Well, two major changes this year. I think they've uh, backed up the triple mando on hole 17 a little bit to kind of get away from being able to throw a big Anheuser. Um, but other than that, hole four's tee pad has changed and hole seven's tee pad has changed. Other than that, the rest of the course is playing pretty similar to years past. Uh, so, yeah, if you've played the course before, you pretty much know what you need to do. Um, even with the, the rainy days we've had the past couple of days, um, limiting practice, like you said. Is it interesting uh, still at this point in the season, throwing a new bag and coming to a venue for the first time, seeing how some of your discs react in new environments? Are there, are there new challenges this week that you've already dialed in? Um, yeah, there, there are some new challenges, just trying to find, um, you know, what disc you're going to throw on a shot. Let's say you relied on one uh, in years past. What new disc are you going to rely on for that shot? Um, other holes, though, maybe you're like, I've struggled with this hole, but now I have um, something that makes it a little bit easier. So, yeah, it's a little bit of give and take. Hey, Chris. Chris with Gatekeeper Media. One quick question. Uh, Music City Open, you were three strokes ahead going into the final round. Mm -hmm. Last week, you were three strokes down going into the final round. You came away with a W in both of them. Can you just go over your mindset for the people back home? Do you have any different mindset going into the final round leading a tournament as opposed to trailing? Um, mostly no, but I will say... Um, if you ever have the lead going into the final round, there's always that thought in the back of your mind. Um, you know, I don't want to give up the lead. So being behind, you don't have that thought in your mind. So um, maybe it makes things easier. Maybe it was this situation. Um, yeah, it's just hard to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. We'll be right back. Thank you.